Hi, and welcome back to TechNote and the third part of our series on the HP Gen 8 microserver. If this wasn't the part you were looking for, links to the other parts are in the video description. In this part, we're connecting to the HP Isla for the first time. We're going to create a new user so that you don't have to bother with the administrator account anymore. We're also going to activate the ILO Advanced License Trial. We're going to upgrade the firmware and enable our SSD system drive. All links to downloads and other pages are available in the video description along with all the commands that we run in the console. The first thing that we're going to do is connect to the ILO. ILO is short for Integrated Lights Out and it's a web interface on the server that allows you to see the server's health and control many of the features. To use the ILO, you need to have a network cable connected to your ILO port. The IP address of the ILO interface will be assigned by DHCP. While you could find the IP address of the ILO by looking at your router's DHCP table, we're going to use HP's tools for PowerShell. Once the download is completed, start the executable, copy the path and click on zip. Now start PowerShell as an administrator. Navigate to the path that we copied previously. And run the HP MSI file. This will start the installation, accept the license terms and click install. Finish the installation. To allow running the HP scripts, we need to enter another PowerShell commandlet. Type in set execution policy remote sign to allow the HP script to run on your computer. Press Y to confirm. As you will see, if you type in find dash, you cannot complete the command. This means we have to restart PowerShell. And as you'll see, we'll now be able to type find-hp and click tab to complete. This means the command is now loaded. This command also needs you to know your IP range. To find your IP range, go into cmd and type ipconfig. On the first row is your IP address, and if you're using the same net mask as I, your range will be the first three octets of your current IP address, and the last octet will be replaced by 1-254, just as I type. The command will now go through all IP addresses in the range and try to find HP ILOs. This might take a while. As you can see, the command has returned one IP address. This is the address of our ILO. So now that we got the IP address of the ILO interface, we're going to start Internet Explorer, type in HTTP colon slash slash and the IP of the ILO interface. We're going to get a certificate error and we're going to ignore that. We're going to sign in with administrator account. These details are on the tag on the back of the server when it's new. We're going to go into administration and user administration to create a new user. We're going to click new. We're going to enter the username, the login name, and the password. We're going to select all the roles, click add user. We're now going to sign out. And now we're signing back in with a new user account. And as you can see in the corner, we're now signing using the TechNot user. We're now going to activate the ILO Advanced License. And the main advantage of doing that is that we can use the remote console after the BIOS has completed posting. Going into Administration and License. And as you can see, it's currently not installed. Just click the link and you will be redirected to HP's page for the ILO Advanced License Trial. The license is free for 60 days, so click the Download Now button. Another page will load, showing you the different licenses available. We're going to use the one on the top, ILO Advanced, click Receive for free. As you can see, you will need an HP account to use this feature. The HP account is free of charge, so just create account and fill in all the details. Once the registration is completed, you will have the option to download a PDF containing your license key. Back in the ILO, enter the license key and click install. As you can see, the status is now OK. Now we're going to upgrade the firmware of the server. This is an optional step, however I would recommend doing it now instead of later. 
To do this, we'll need the HP ProLiant Service Pack, available as a download from HP. We're gonna sign back into the ILO again. I'm gonna go into the remote console and select remote console again. I'm gonna click launch and run. We're gonna open the virtual drive menu and select the option image file CD-ROM DVD. We're gonna mount the ISO that we downloaded. We're gonna go into the power switch option and turn the server on. The server is now booting. This takes some time. However, be ready to press F11 once the option becomes available. When the button has been clicked, it will turn white. In the boot menu, press 1 to boot from the virtual CD-ROM. Select the automatic firmware update. From this point, the firmware upgrade is completely automatic. You can click the annotation to skip to the end of this process. Towards the end of the process, it's completely normal for the ILO interface to kick you out as it's being upgraded. But after a minute or so, you should be able to sign in. The firmware upgrade is now completed and it's time for us to enable the SSD system drive in the RAID controller. We're going to launch the remote console. As you can see, our server is currently trying to boot, so we're going to press reset. Once you see the HP Dynamic Smart Array initializing, you can press F5. The option will be displayed, however, in this video we were a bit too quick, so you can't actually see the prompt to press F5. The Smart Storage interface has now completed loading. Click the Smart Array. Click Configure, select the Unassigned Drives option, and select only the SSD. Click Create Array. We're going to use the default options. Click Create Logical Drive. Click 
finish. And click the X at the top of the screen. Confirm. And then click the power icon. And select reboot. So, that was pretty much it for this video, but stay tuned for more. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode where we will be installing Windows 2012 Hyper-V on the server.